Hello, my name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD 89 VA Claims Consultant, Leave No Vet Behind, and also I'm a United States Army veteran. Today I'm bringing you another educational video as it pertains to the VA disability compensation claims process. And today I'm going to be discussing how you, the veteran, can file a complaint with the Department of Veterans Affairs. But before we get into today's video, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So today's video, how can you, the veteran, file a complaint with the Department of Veterans Affairs? I did a video a couple of years ago um, where I walk you through how you file a complaint, and I'm pretty sure those links are old. I don't even know if they still are active, but I was talking to a veteran the other week, and he gave me this link. He texted me this link, and I was like, man, I got to go check it out. And I walked through it myself just to see what it looked like. And it's fairly easy. And I'm going to share that with you today. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And this is the uh, the VA's uh, website where you can go file a complaint, ask a question, submit an inquiry or whatever. All right. Now, the link for this, I am going to put in the description section of this video. All right. So you got to find it. So then click the show more and you'll see the link. OK, now there's some stuff on here um, you want to pay close attention to. You can sign in, you can create an account or sign in or you can start a message without signing in. And then you have looking for the status of an inquiry. So at the end of this, when you submit it, you're going to get a reference number. Take a screenshot of that or email it to yourself write it down, print it out or whatever. Okay. Because if, and when you get ready to come back and check the status, you can put that number here, hit file my inquiry, and it'll give you a status. Okay. Now I did create one already and I put it in there and this is the message that I got right here. New, your inquiry is currently in queue uh, to be reviewed. Okay. Now let's click the first one. Sign in to start a message. Now, I'm not going to sign in because it's going to populate a lot of information for me, social security number and all that. So I'm not going to sign in, use my ID me account. But if you have a My Healthy Vet, you can sign in that way as well uh, if you don't have an ID me account. All right. So let's go back and we're going to start a message without signing in. OK, so we get to this screen. It says, tell us about your question. OK, so the magnifying glass, let's click on it see what comes up. You have uh, some items here you can pick from, the GI Bill, compensation, VA healthcare, Veterans Affairs debt, appeals, home loan guarantee, burial, uh, veteran readiness and employment. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna select compensation, service connection, service connected benefits. That's what we're gonna select for today. Let me make sure Healthcare, you got appeals of denied claims. Okay, so compensation service connect that benefits. I already have in my mind what my complaint, what I want my complaint to be. So we hit select, go to the next magnifying glass. We have aid and attendance, direct deposit, filing uh, for compensation benefits, guardianship issues, questions about compensation received, status of pending claim. Let's select status of pending claim. But you will have to select the item that uh, represents your complaint or your inquiry or question. But I know what my complaint is, so it will fall under status of pending claim. All right, tell us the reason why you're contacting us. Well, I have a complaint. My inquiry is a general question about me, the veteran, for the dependent on behalf of the veteran. So it's about me, the veteran. And you have email, phone, or U.S. mail. I want a phone call back. I always find that to be better beneficial because your message, their message back to you may not be the answer that you're looking for. So to receive full clarification, full transparency, I want a phone call back. Now, my question is, um, I received, oh, let's go back. I Claimed sleep apnea 
secondary to PTSD. And this is just a fictitious uh, complaint. All right. And submit it and actionable BBQ and Nexus statement. I request it. Uh, my claim to be forwarded to the rating activity. To be rated with the evidence of record. Please have a phone on the phone number here. Okay, so my complaint is I claim sleep apnea secondary to PTSD and submitted an actionable DBQ and Nexus statement. I requested my claim to be forwarded to the rating activity, that's the RBSR, uh, the adjudicator, to be rated with the evidence of record, meaning you know they have evidence to, in hand, the DBQ and the Nexus statement, they have that, they can use it. Uh, please have a supervisor con contact me by phone, my phone number, to explain why CAP exam was requested and my DBQ and Nexus statement were not used to rate my claim. Now, that's my fictitious complaint for John Doe that I'm doing today. So I think it speaks directly to what the issue is that I'm having, that my complaint, okay, is short, sweet, to the point. It's not I'm going on and on and rambling. It's short, direct, and, and, and to the point. So what should happen it goes to the supervisor, and I should have put, please have a supervisor, I me mean, um, at the regional office that has your over my claim to contact. Okay, so please have the supervisor at the regional office that has jurisdiction over my claim to contact me by phone to explain, okay? Now, when you get that phone call, and the reason why I am I would ask for a supervisor because that those are the ones that can make things happen. You talk to a VSR on the phone, this is going to take it, and guess what? They're going to give it to a supervisor. So might as well speak to a supervisor in the first place, right? This is just me. Your complaint could be different, all right? So when the supervisor calls, first questions I'm asking, and these are some of the questions that I talked about in some other videos. What's your name? What's your job title? What location do you work out of? What's the three-digit number of that location? Do you understand my complaint? Have you looked at my DBQ and Nexus statement? You know, if it's if you don't feel that it's actionable and sufficient, what, what's wrong with it? You know, those are the questions that I would be asking, okay? So now we have that. Let's go to the next screen. So we got, let's see, John Doe here. Yep. So yeah, I had this information already in here from before. So we got uh, the required fields, the veteran's name, first name, last name, daytime phone, uh, veteran's uh, email. You have the address information. Now, when I signed in using my ID me account, all this information was in there. Okay. I hate that they make the email required because they ask, how do you want us to contact you? And you said by phone, not by email. So some people may try and get slick at the VA and email you, but you have to put that required email in. Now, if you really want them to contact you by phone, I'm just sitting here thinking, would I actually give them my real email? 
I use a John Doe or whatever, you know, then explain why. So just keep that in mind. But if you want to give me your email, uh, just keep buying it. May try and be slick and email you and not call you like you requested. Okay. Now, the military, the army, um, and I'm not going to fill out the rest. Well, you got to put your birth date in there. Okay. Um, and then the claim, VA claims number. Uh, you definitely, I would put that in there to make it easy for them to go to your claim. So that would be your social security number. All right. Uh, but if you have your dates of service, I'm not going to put mine in. If you have it, the more information that you can put in there, I think the better off. That way they can look up your information. But if they got your, the claims number, they can go right to it. Okay. Select next. And this is just everything that you put in, you know, uh, what category best describes your question, what topic, tell us the reason. My inquiry is about me, the veteran. Uh, how should we get in touch with you by phone? The question, okay? Now look at that again. And you can put my, I have a complaint or whatever, but it's short, direct, and to the point. I know a lot of veterans want to get long-winded your message is going to get lost, okay? Keep it short, direct, and to the point. Tell us about the veteran, John Doe, all his information, okay, birth date, and all that, okay? And then you got robo-security stuff, right? Thank you. Okay, so I'm not going to hit submit, okay? I did that last time, and I thought it was going to take me to another screen, and it was like, oh, what it did do, now up here, it has a, a feature, a completion feature, but this is the last screen, okay? So when you hit submit, it's going to finalize that, and it's going to give you that, in, that reference number, okay? It's going to give you a reference number. So they're going to give you a reference number. So you copy, paste, or whatever that reference number, and then... You can put it here later and click on find my inquiry and it will tell you the status. Okay. All right. So I hope that helped, um, you know, give you a little uh, clarity. I think it's a really cool feature that the VA came out with. Uh, think about it. You know, like I said, you could sign in uh, if you have a My Healthy Vet account or IDME account, or you can go through like I did and just, uh, put all the information in there. Uh, when I did sign in, use my IDME account, it actually populated a lot of information for me. So it cut my time down, but literally it took maybe 10 minutes, probably take you 10 to 15 minutes at the most. Um, but when you get to the complaint or the question, it's up to you how long you want to be. I always found uh, success with keeping it short, direct, and to the point. Okay. But if you're a veteran, that likes to be long-winded, then by all means. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. But again, someone has to read this, take the time, and your message could get lost. Okay? So again, the link to this um, website is going to be in the description section of this video. All right? So let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you think about uh, the video. Let me know what you think about um, the uh, VA's website. Uh, where you can go and leave a um, comment, question, a complaint, or whatever, and leave that down in the comment section. Let me know what you think, all right? So with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you.